So first up, we're going to do some examples of equations of lines. What we're going to do is find both the parametric equations as well as the symmetric equations for these lines. So first one, this one's kind of a softball to get us warmed up. Find a line that is parallel to the given vector, 3, negative 2, 6, that passes through the point 2, 4, 5. Now ultimately, what we're trying to get is a point on the line and a vector that is uh, parallel to or the direction vector for the line. So the direction vector, since we already have something that is parallel, that is going to be exactly what we'll be making use of. So 3, negative 2, 6. <clears throat> now as far as passing through a point, we are given a point as well. So this is one of those nice warm-up problems to uh, lull us into a false sense of security. So the parametric form, we're supposed to do x equals, y equals, and z equals. And we do starting point. Starting point is 2, 4, and 5, plus vector component times t. So for x, that'll be plus 3t. For y, that'll be minus 2t. And for z, that'll be plus 6t. That would be the parametric form of this line. Now granted, this is not a unique parameterization. I could have taken any scalar multiple of this vector and used that as my coefficient of t, and that would still define the same line. Now as far as the symmetric form of the line is, imagine solving all three of these for t. So in the x equation, we'd be subtracting 2 and then dividing by 3. So x minus 2 divided by 3. In the y equation, we subtract 4 and divide by negative 2, so y minus 4 divided by negative 2. And then for the z component, we would have uh, subtract 5 and then divide by 6. Now hopefully it's apparent to everybody where all of these things relate to the given information. These three denominators that you see, the 3, the negative 2, and the 6, those are all components of the direction vector and the 2, 4, 5 that you see in the numerators would be the point that the line passes through. So if given a symmetric equation or symmetric equations, that's how you can figure out some of that information. All right, let's try another example. For this one, <clears throat> we're gonna find equations for the line that passes through the points 3, 2, 6 and 4, negative 1, 6. Now this time we were not given a direction vector, which means that we get to create our own direction vector. We'll call these two points P and Q, and say that for the direction vector, we'll find PQ. Additionally, you could also find the vector QP. Again, these parameterizations are not necessarily unique. We'll be treating Q as terminal and P as initial. This will be 4 minus 3, negative 1 minus 2, and 6 minus 6. Simplifying this vector, we get 1, negative 3, 0. Now as far as a point is concerned, you're allowed to select either one of these points. Uh, I'm going to go with the first one just because. You are certainly welcome to go with the second one, and you would just come up with a slightly different parameterization. Parametric. So in the parametric form, once again, we start with x equals, y equals, z equals, and we do a starting point plus component times t. So a starting point is 3 for x, 2 for y, and 6 for z. That comes from the given point here. And then we do plus vector component times t. So for x, that'll be plus 1t for the 1. For y, that'll be minus 3t. And then for z, this is sort of a unique opportunity because we have a 0 there that would technically be plus 0t. So we're just going to go ahead and not put anything there. Now, interesting thing happens then when we try to do the symmetric form of the line. We said that for symmetric form, we solve for t in all three of these equations, but we don't have a t in this equation. So here's what we'll do instead. Solving for t in the first equation gives us x minus 3, technically x minus 3 over 1. In the second equation, that would be y minus 2 divided by negative 3. And since we can't solve for z in the last one, we'll just keep that z equals 6 in play, and that'll just have to work. All right, on we go. We'll try one more. This one's kind of interesting. 
If you take a plane and intersect it with another plane, you are going to wind up with a line of intersection. So because of this, I am interested in finding the line of intersection between the following two planes. The two planes are uh, 5x minus 2y minus 2z is equal to 1, and 4x plus y plus z is equal to 6. Now the line of intersection between two planes would be the line that is contained within both planes. Given that the line is contained within both planes, let's see if we could draw a reasonable uh, thing that this would look like. So there's one plane and then we come in with another plane like so. The line of intersection between these two planes would have to be contained within both of the planes. Given that it's contained within both of the planes, it is guaranteed to be orthogonal to both of the normal vectors of these two planes. Now I can tell you what the normal vectors are simply by looking at the coefficients. We'll call this one n1 for the first normal vector. That normal vector would be 5, negative 2, negative 2. And for the other normal vector, this would be n2. This will be the vector 4, 1, 1. Our direction vector needs to be orthogonal to both of these vectors. Again, if we have something that is contained within both of the planes, it is guaranteed to be orthogonal to both of these normal vectors. So for our direction vector, it will be necessary for us to take the cross product of these two vectors. Let's, uh, let's give ourselves a little more room down here. So i, j, k. Then we'll have 5, negative 2, negative 2. And 4, 1, 1. Given that we're doing a cross product, I'm going to recopy the first two columns. i, j, 5, negative 2, 4, 1. It's going to get a little slashy slashy. Going to slash you up real good. Hope you don't mind. 1 times negative 2 times i, that'll be negative 2i. 4 times negative 2 times j, that'll be negative 8j. And 1 times 5 times k will be plus 5k. We'll account for that with a plus sign in front. For the slash is going in the upward direction. I'm seeing 4 times negative 2 times k, that'll be negative 8k. 1 times negative 2 times i, that'll be minus 2i. And 1 times 5 times j, that'll be plus 5j. Then we'll combine all of the like terms that we see, and we'll see what we get. We'll see a negative 2i minus negative 2i. That's going to give us another zero component for this vector. We see a negative 8j minus 5j. That's negative 13. Oh, don't need a j there. It's already in vector form. And for k, I'm seeing a 5k here minus negative 8k. That's going to be 13 for the z component. I'm going to recopy this a little more cleanly. Now, given that this is the direction vector that we got from the cross product, we could technically divide this through by 13. A scalar multiple will still be parallel to the given vector. Now, this only gives us the direction vector. What it doesn't give us is a point. Now, in order for us to get a point on the line of intersection between two planes, that means that we need any solution of this system of equations. That is to say, I'm going to consider this as two equations with three variables, and we need any solution of this system. Now, typically what we would do for something like this is some sort of substitution or elimination I do notice something interesting here, though. The first component of our normal vector is zero. This means that x is guaranteed to be a constant. The reason that this has come about is because the coefficients of y and z were proportional to each other. One here, one here, negative two here, negative two here. So if I take the second equation and multiply it by two, I'm going to be able to eliminate both of those parameters and we'll be able to solve for what the x value of our point has to be. 
So this is going to give us 5x plus 8x, that is 13x. I don't believe it's a coincidence that um, x is showing up so frequent, or the number 13 is showing up so frequently in this example. 1 plus 2 times 6, that'll give us 13 here as well. This lets us know that x is going to be equal to 1. Now if I go back to either of these equations and plug in x equals 1, make sure we're still framed up here. So plug in x equals 1. The first equation becomes 5 minus 2y minus 2z is equal to 1, or negative 2y minus 2z is equal to negative 4. Or put more simply, that's going to be y plus z is equal to 2. Now if we have to plug it into the second equation, that would be 4 plus y plus z is equal to 6. And stated more simply, that's going to be y plus z is equal to 2. So again, as long as x is 1, both of these equations become the same thing. So select any values of y and z such that y plus z is equal to 2. We could let them be 0 and 2. We could let them be 2 and 0. We could let them be 1 and 1. Again, parameterizations are not unique. So this lets us know that a point on the line is going to be the point 1, 1, 1. Given this point and this direction vector, we are ready to complete this problem. So the parametric form of this would be x equals, y equals, and z equals. We start with our starting point, which is, again, 1, 1, 1, or however you defined those, plus the corresponding component times t. So for x, that'll be plus 0t. For y, that'll be minus 13t. And for z, that'll be plus 13t. This also lets us know that for our symmetric form, we can't solve for t in the x equation, so we don't. This will be y minus 1 divided by negative 13 is equal to z minus 1 over 13, and x is equal to 1. So yeah, a couple examples of finding equations of lines. Now I realize that some of the things here were a little bit open-ended and you had a little bit of freedom, so um, please know that if you're working on these problems with a friend and you guys come up with ridiculously different answers, please know that you're not necessarily wrong. Parameterizations are just not unique. So uh, yeah, don't worry about it.